Hi, and welcome back to the 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this week's episode, we're going to be taking a look at the problematic PLA chips in the Commodore 64. Um, there's a reason why all these chips decide to die. So it's not just the PLAs that pack up either. Um, so these are just some that I pulled out of my tub. Um, I'll let you have a look in that tub in a second. Here's my tub of chips. <laughs> and all these are um, all moss chips. Why are they all dead? And these are the good old SID chips. Just a handful of chips I pulled out of the bin. And it's all got to do with the way these was made. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna take you to the, to the website and let you have a look at the Commodore 64 bread bin killer website um the guy that's on here that's read it up is absolutely spot on so i've used ai to read through it for us so if you like it and you like that i've used that or you prefer to hear me drop me a comment if you think i should use that ai to read out more things drop me a comment if you think i shouldn't drop me a comment <laughs> so let's take a look at this website see what it's got to say for itself um, and then we'll come back and have a look at these the Silicon Underground Last updated on the 23rd of June 2024 by Dave Farquhar The Commodore PLA is one of the most problematic ICS in the Commodore 64 Even in the early 1990s, Commodore parts dealer The Grapevine Group estimated 50% of dead C64s were due to a bad PLA In this blog post we will explore what the PLA was, and we'll investigate the gremlin that lurks inside some plus but not others. The chip that gives the C64 a full 64K of RAM. Commodore PLA The Commodore PLA chip at U17, top left, is the single most problematic chip in breadbin style C64S. The PLA the chip at position U17 on C64 breadbin motherboards, was the Commodore 64's internal traffic cop. The 6510 CPU in the Commodore 64 can only address 64K of memory. This was more than just RAM. ROM needs memory address space, and so do I forward slash O chips. Commodore really wanted to sell a computer that had a full 64K of RAM in it. The PLA was the answer for that. It allowed the processor to swap RAM for I forward slash O and ROM. The RAM underneath the I forward slash O was much more difficult to use, but it was there, so you couldn't accuse Commodore of false advertising. When the PLA gremlin rears its ugly head and the PLA goes bad, the system behaves in unpredictable ways. The most common fault is a black screen when you power the system on, but the system can fail in somewhat more subtle ways as well. Today I am not sure you could say the PLA is responsible for half of Commodore 64 failures. But this chip at U17 on motherboards made from 1982 to 1986 is still the most common point of failure in breadbin models. C64C computers manufactured in 1987 or later solved the problem. Commodore integrated the PLA logic along with other logic into a single chip and outsourced its production to Sharp. Sharp's Super PLA was always very reliable. The PLA's troubled history. The PLA is basically a truth table, devised by Bob Yance, one of the principal designers of the C64. Initially, Commodore programmed its logic into an off-the-shelf component, a field programmable logic chip from Cynetics called the 82S100, first introduced in 1975. Commodore also sometimes used a Fairkilled 93459, 
a clone of the 82S100. Commodore later developed their own clone, called the MOS 906114-0. But it would be cheaper to just etch the logic straight into a piece of non-programmable silicon. Eventually, Commodore deleted a programmed 82S100, traced out the circuits, and had engineer Dave Diorio design a replacement. These chips have part numbers 7700, 251641, or 8700. Why Commodore Plus go bad, a matter of chemistry. So why did Commodore manufactured Plus have a gremlin inside? Chemistry. Dan Morris, a former manager at Commodore's chip fab in California from 1981 to 1985, said the chip corrodes internally due to an imbalance of boron and phosphorus that they use to soften the silicon to make it flow. The more boron they used, the faster it flowed. But the more boron you use, the more prone it is to corrode the aluminum in the chip. Former Commodore engineer B.I.L. Hurd has said numerous times that the chemistry in Commodore's foundry wasn't always as good as other chip makers. At least it wasn't as consistent. This meant that certain chips broke down more quickly than others. And they could degrade just sitting on the shelf. You didn't have to be actively using the machine for that chip to go bad. Although since using the chip raises the temperature and accelerates the chemical reaction, using it will accelerate the decay process. The Commodore produced 74 series logic chips were also prone to the same problem. To a lesser degree, so was the 6581 SID. Good and bad plus. If you have a very early 64 with an 82S100 on the motherboard, the 82S100 is probably fine, no matter how old it is. The same goes for a Fairkill 93459 or a Philips PLS100. But a PLA with a Commodore part number on it probably is living on borrowed time if it still works. Some knowledgeable repair people have been programming the PLA logic on 282S100S or PLS100S to make reliable replacements even in the 90s. Some people also used a Soviet clone of the 82S100 called the P556PT2, or the R556RT2. Modern Replacements There have been a number of efforts to produce modern replacements including the Super PLA, Real PLA, U17 Plankton, Platinum, Neat PLA, and PLA20V8, aka Gal PLA. I've personally used the Gal PLA, which is a small PCB containing a pair of Gal20V8B chips from the 1990s. These parts are no longer in production but are still readily available on the secondary market and still pretty inexpensive, so it is a cost-effective PLA replacement. The NEAT PLA uses a newer component. Its designers even mounted on the PCB upside down and silk screened the other side to make it look a little more like an IC rather than a PCB. So you can see now, can't you? All this lot and why it's dead. It even said on the um, website that it was a bromo, bromide, bromide, B-R, B-O-R-O-M, some of they call it, bromod, or bromod, something like that. Anyway, <laughs> it's the actual chemical that melts the silicon and allows the silicon to flow. Uh, so the more they put in that, the more it erodes the aluminium or aluminum, um, or however that AI said it, because it didn't read some of them words right, did it? I mean, fair child, it said fair chad, or something like that it was. But it was quite amusing, that. But yeah, uh, that chemical that they put in there to be able to um, produce these chips, um, actually they killed them off over time. So you, you can have brand new PLAs, you can have brand new SIDs, you can have brand new 6510s, you can have brand new 6522s, you can have anything that's MOS branded will be um, produced the same way 
Um, and then have you noticed there that Bill Heard, or B-I-L, B-I-L, Heard, as the AI called him. <laughs> Sorry, Bill, that were AI for you. Um, yeah, even Bill Heard said, you know, that he's surprised that um, they're all still alive, to be honest. And, and even he said it's the manufacturing process that actually makes these chips die off. And it were about 50% fail rate um, for the PLA chips in the Commodore 64. So, what's best? So, you can see there, I'll put some pictures down, you can have a look. You can see there, we've got a plethora of PLAs. They, they are all great, they all work well. Um, and it's all down to cost, really. I mean, the Planktons, I think they were about £18 back in the day, if you can get them. I don't think they're still available now. If I'm wrong, let me know if you can still get the Planktons. Um, you can get the Gals. They're easy, available. You can make up the boards, that's great. You can have a Gal chip. Um, and there is absolutely loads. You saw on the thumbnail, there's loads of different styles of PLA. There was some in the early C64s, before Commodore de-lidded, or de as the AI said, <laughs> um, that they had some other chips in, some they had Philips in it, and they had some different Commodore branded ones. This one, as you can see here, if I can change that focus for you, is a PLS100N, and these do not fail. Well, I'm saying they don't fail, but the only reason why they would fail is if it had a power spike or something like that. They don't just die off their own accord, don't these ones. And these ones are very, very, very cheap at the moment. I picked a couple of these up off a gentleman on eBay, um, and then they were £10. And, and I think a couple of pounds postage or something like that. So for 12 quid, you're going to get a chip that lasts and it still looks the same. And when you sat there in the board, yeah, I know you don't see it, you know, when the lid's on. But when you open it up and you see that gal that's stuck out there like a great monstrosity, um, it looks rough. Um, to me, it does anyway. It doesn't look um, natural and pure, if you like. But these are just fit straight in, straight into the socket and they look brilliant in there. So these are going to be my go-to PLAs now. Um, the guy said on eBay, um, I asked him if he had plenty of them, if he would like me to link him in the description, which I said I would do. So that's going to be a link in the description to be able to purchase these from the guy on eBay. They, are, they do come pre-programmed. You can buy these blank and program them yourselves if you want. Um, but they are pre-programmed, he has tested them before they get, they get sent out. He told me that he had about 100, so he had plenty, and he can get his hands on loads more. So I don't think that seller is going to pack up in any time soon. So I'm hoping that in years to come, or at least, at least another year, the link's still going to be available down there in eBay for you to purchase one of these um, PLS 100Ns for your PLA in your Breadbin 64. So yeah, um, If you've enjoyed this video, if you found it informative, drop me a comment. If I've said something wrong and I'm completely wrong, drop me a comment. Um, check out in the description, the YouTube Retro Repairers links are down there. There's Captain Commodore, Retro For You, uh, Joseph Retro Bits, all links down there for them guys. Go and check them out, they're absolutely brilliant. We have got a Christmas live stream coming up too. Um, so that's going to be on the 29th of December and, and that will be over on retro for us um, channel on YouTube So thanks again guys for tuning in uh, Try not to leave it as long next time before I make a video um, Yeah, so ooh, we're getting closer to Christmas. It's nearly Christmas time ooh, Goody goody goodies looking forward to it but I will be about and I will be doing some more YouTube videos for you guys. So don't forget, get yourself over to eBay, buy yourself a PLA off this guy um, and you won't have any problems ever again in the PLA range. Yeah, so thanks Commodore for making these crappy chips. Well, they're not crappy, are they? They, they did work and they were good back in the day. It's just that they don't last very long these days. Such a shame. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye!